Luka Doncic is the reason why the Mavericks are where they are right now. He's the reason why they have home court advantage. And he's also the biggest reason why they have a 52 and 30 record. But guys like Jalen Brunson, Spencer Dinwiddie, Reggie Bullock, Dorian Finney-Smith, Maxi Kleber, Davis Bertans, those guys, those role players and bench players are the reason why the Dallas Mavericks will win this year's NBA championship. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. How could they win without Luka Doncic? Well, guess what? The dude is gonna be back for game four. The news just came out minutes ago. But before we get into today's video, let's give a little credit where credit's due. Nico Harrison, Jason Kidd. These two guys were a marriage match made in heaven. Nico Harrison has done an excellent job constructing this roster. In the Kristoff Porzingis trade, I remember when all these videos came out where the Wizards won that trade. But who's laughing now? Jason Kidd has implemented his defensive toughness that he brought from his playing days. And the Mavericks look like a force to be reckoned with in these NBA playoffs. Their defensive prowess and their offensive shooting is unmatched between any team I've seen in the playoffs this far. And with Devin Booker out the next two to three weeks, who knows, anything can happen. Let's jump right into the video. Luka Doncic has played three games against the Jazz in the regular season this year. He's averaged 30 points, 11 boards, and seven and a half dimes per game, while shooting a cool 45.6% from the field and 44.4% from beyond the arc, with the Mavs going two and one in those games against the Jazz. So let's think about this for a second. As good as Brunson and Dinwiddie have been at slashing through that Utah defense, imagine if you add Doncic back in the mix. The Mavs' chances of pulling off this series upset is unbelievable. I'm almost guaranteeing a sweep on Monday night. Oh, let's not forget Maxi Kleber's confidence boost that he's gotten. He scored 25 points on 8 and 11 shooting from deep in game two, and he went off last night as well. Some of you in the comment section said that he would be the X factor for the Mavericks, and I tend to agree. If he can keep being consistent on the offensive side of the ball, his defense will take care of the rest. Him being able to guard the one through five position is an absolute banger for the Mavericks. But let's talk about the cheap shot from Royce O'Neal last night. And yes, I did say cheap shot. We all saw the same clip. But the bad man that he is, he returned and led the Mavericks with 31 points on 12 of 22 shooting. JB has scored 72 points in just the last two games. And guess what? He's taking care of the ball. He's only had one tourney thus far. Brunson and Dinwiddie have been able to punish the Utah's pathetic perimeter defense. And their all-ball defense isn't that much better. They're able to slash through the paint and drive to the open bucket. And if they're met with a rim protector like Rudy Gobert, they kick it out to their open shooter like Kleber or Bertens. And these guys are hitting their shots. Dorian Finney-Smith is playing excellent defense on Utah's Donovan Mitchell. We couldn't ask for a better defender. And Reggie Bullock is doing what Reggie Bullock does. His two-way presence on this Mavericks team is a lock for a great role player. Last night, Dallas dominated the Jazz at their own game. In the first half, they made 13 of 25 three-point attempts. And that's more than the Jazz even attempted. They only went three for nine from beyond the arc. Dallas, they finished 18 of 42 from beyond the arc as well. And Reggie Bullock made three of those. Finney Smith had two. Dinwiddie had two as well. But guess what? Last night's hero was Maxi Kleber. The dude had four. And remember Josh Green, who I put down in my last video? I salute you, my friend. Josh Green had three three-pointers, and Davis Bertans added another three as well. Now, I'm not gonna lie. After the Jazz scored 40 points in that third quarter, I was shaking in my boots a little. 18 of those was by Donovan Mitchell. But when you saw the Mavs break that huddle, they looked hyper-focused. They looked actually locked in. And when the game was on the line, Spencer Dinwiddie took over. He blew by Donovan Mitchell with two layups, and he might have gotten away with the push off on the second drive, but who knows? And then Brunson, it was his turn. He scored six straight points. Then the dagger came when Finney Smith hit that open look from beyond the arc. And where else was it? The corner, baby. Offensively, it doesn't really seem like the Mavericks are playing with any schemes. They're really just spreading the floor and looking for open opportunities. But the Jazz, they're playing iso ball. Everybody is dribbling the ball around, wasting energy and time. 
And in the playoffs, both East and West, everybody is playing great ball. No schemes, fewer sets, spreading the floor and looking for opportunities. And the opportunities are coming from fantastic ball movement. The Jazz are, quite simply to put it, the worst team in the entire postseason. And there's not really an explanation for it other than they want to lose or two. Q doesn't have a clue. Just watch the other games. There's some great ball being played across the league. This comes down to leadership. You can tell the leadership for the Utah Jazz don't really have any heart. And with the Dallas Mavericks, the leaders in Jalen Brunson, Dorian Finney-Smith, Luka Doncic, Spencer Dinwiddie have all bought into this next man up mentality. But that leads me into today's question. Who do you guys believe will be the next man up for the Dallas Mavericks in game four? With Luka Doncic potentially starting, could it be him? Or could it be Dorian Finney-Smith hitting those wide open corners, baby? Or could you see another game put together by JB? Spencer Dinwiddie came out last night and played very well. Maxi Kleber put together a two game stretch that has been nothing short of fantastic. Davis Pertans is showing up. Josh Green even showed up last night. He is my unsung hero of the evening. But let me know in the comment section. And tomorrow we'll be back better than ever with some more Dallas Mavericks basketball. But until then, like always, I'll save y'all a seat. Peace.